Welcome to the quiz. A factory produces racing bikes X and mountain bikes Y. The number of mountain bikes does not exceed five more than four times the number of racing bikes. That's our first inequality. Mountain bikes is Y, so Y does not exceed. So I'm going to write Y does not exceed, so it's less than or equal to five more than. Five more than what? Put the what first. So something plus five. Four times the number of racing bikes. Four X plus five. Go to my B value, which is five. My slope is four, which is 4 over 1. My delta x is 1, my delta y is 4. So I'm going to move over 1 and up 1, 2, 3, 4, like that. It's a solid line, it's less than, so I'm shading below. The next one, 2 times the number of racing bikes added to 3 times the number of mountain bikes is not less than 15. 2 times racing bikes is 2y. 2 times 2, the racing bikes are at 2x, added to 3 times the mountain bikes plus 3y is not less than. That means, could it be equal to if it's not less than? Yeah. Could it be greater than? Yeah. So greater than or equal to, greater than or equal to 15. And let's subtract 2x from both sides. So we have 3y is greater than or equal to negative 2x plus 15. Then I'm going to divide everything by 3 to get rid of this 3 here. y is greater than or equal to negative 2 over 3 3x plus 15 divided by 3 is 5. My b value is 5. My slope is negative 2 thirds. I'm going to be moving over 3 and down 2. 1, 2. Solid line, and I'm shading above. The next one, 5 times the number of mountain bikes, it's 5y. 5y is not smaller than, that means greater than or equal to, 13 less than, something take away 13. 3 times the number of racing bikes, 3x. I want to get rid of the 5 to divide every term by 5. 3 over 5x take away 13. My b value is negative 13. I get my b value and the slope is 13 fifths. Let's see what that is as a decimal. 13 divided by 5 is 2.6. This is negative 2.6. I'm going to go to negative 2, turn on my snapping tool, and just drag this, eyeball it to about 2.6. This is going to be 2.5, so just a little bit further, something like that. Notice it's going through this nice point here. Greater than or equal to, we're shading above. There's our arrow. Next inequality is 3 times the number of racing bikes, that's 3x, 3x, added to 2 times the number of mountain bikes, plus 2y, does not exceed 41, does not exceed, is not greater than, so it's going to be less than, but it could also be equal to 41. I want to get the 2y's alone, so I'm going to subtract the 3x from both sides, so 2y is less than or equal to negative 3x plus 41. Then I'm going to divide everything by 2, that's going to give me y is less than or equal to negative 3 over 2x plus half of 40 is 20, so half of 41 is 20.5 plus 20.5. Let's go up to the 20.5. I'm going to go to 20. I'm doing that to get my slope perfect. Negative 3 over 2. So I'm going to move over 2 and then down 3. 1, 2, 3, like that. And then I'm going to drag this up to 20.5. You just have to grab the line and eyeball it about there. Next one, the number of racing bikes added to four times the number of mountain bikes is fewer than 37. Number of racing bikes, that's x, added to four times the number of mountain bikes, plus 4y, is fewer than 37. Less than 37. I'm going to subtract x from both sides. 4y is less than negative x plus 37. Then divide everything by 4. That's going to give me y is less than negative 1 quarter x, or x over 4, same thing, plus 37 divided by 4. Well, 4 goes into 36 nine times with one left over. 1 divided by 4 is a quarter, 0.25, 9.25. You can do 9 at 37 divided by 4, and it would give you 9.25. All right, I'm going to go to my 9 as my b value. I'm going to turn the snapping on to get actually to that 9 point. The slope is negative 1 quarter, so I'm going to go over 4 and down 1. It's less than, so it's a dotted line, and I'm going to be shading below is less than. And it's 9.25. Turn on the snapping. This is 9.5. 9.25 is like a half of a half quarter, so it's going to be like somewhere around here. Now I'm going to make my polygonic constraints. And here, and here, and here, and here, and here. We're talking about below this line, above this line, above that line, below this line, below this line, above that line, above that line. So we're talking about this region here. There's your polygonic constraints. We are going to look at the profits. I'm going to copy all that. I'm going to go into a spreadsheet. Each racing bike you're making $784.10 times each x. It's equal to that times the x value. 132. And then I'm going to fill that down. 
Let's go back and look at our vertices. We have, yeah, let's start with the A1. It's at 9.7. X is 9, the Y is 7. And that gives us $7,981.60. The next one is the B point. It's at 11.4. And the next one is 6.1 is the C point. The next one, the D point is 0, 5. And the last one, the E point, is 1, 9. 1 and 9. Which one is the biggest? It's this point right here, 11, 4. I want to talk very quickly about scanning lines. We go back here and if we make an equation out of this, out of the $784.10 per racing bike here, I'll do that in red. So $784.10 times X, times the number of racing bikes, added to $132.10 per mountain bike times Y is equal to our profit, P. Then I want to get the Y alone. I have 132.10 Y is equal to negative, because I'm subtracting 784.10 X from both sides, minus 784.10 4.10x plus our profit. I'm going to divide everything by 132.10. So y is equal to negative 784.10 or 0.1, you could write, divided by 132.10 plus some b value. And we don't care about that b value because this is a scanning line. So we can pick any b value we like, which is nice. We just write some b value that we don't care about. I want to turn this into a decimal. 784.1 divided by 132.1 gives us 5.935 over 1. And that's going to be our slope. Oh, I forgot the x here. But we have y is equal to 5.935. 5.935. Four, let's say. Let's graph that. I'm going to pick a B like, I don't know, like 20 or 15 or 17. It doesn't matter. I'm just going to pick some B value. Then I'm going to make a slope move over one and then down 5.94, which is almost six. I'm going to turn the snapping on and move down one, two, three, four, five, almost six. It's 5.94, really close to six. I'm going to turn the snapping off for a second. Just move this up a little, nothing. You can also hold down the command key and go up. It takes 20 presses of the arrow to get up to from the 10 to the 11. If I go up one, I'm moving up by 0 0.05. Okay, so if I do that, that's pretty much what I'm after. 5.94 is really close to 5.95. That's what our line's gonna look like, and it's a scanning line. So I can grab it and scan it around. So I can say, okay, this is gonna be my minimum, and over here, the B value is gonna be my maximum. So the minimum and the maximum are gonna be points on your polygonic constraints where the scanning line will not go through the interior of the polygonic constraints. A is not going to be your maximum or your minimum. C is not going to be your maximum or your minimum. And B is not going to be your maximum or your minimum. But A, guarantee you, that's going to be your minimum. And B is your maximum. So that's what the scanning line does for you. It eliminates all but two points. And then you have to test which one is your maximum, which one is your minimum. In this case, we can tell that this is going to be the minimum and this is going to be the maximum. Let's put these values in. It's going to be at 11, 4. 11 racing bikes, 4 mountain bikes will give us our maximized profit. It was $9,153.50. I need a dollar sign in front of that. 